Hey everybody, welcome back to Classic Mini DIY. On today's how-to episode, I'm gonna teach you guys how to replace and install a racing lightweight alternator instead of the big heavy alternators that you might find on most road cars. Today's episode is brought to you by you. That's right. Every single episode created on Classic Mini DIY is made with the help of our patrons and our long-term part sponsor, 7 Mini Parts. If you want to see more mini stuff and more videos in the future, please consider supporting the channel on patreon.com forward slash classic mini DIY or by checking out some of my awesome merch like t-shirts, stickers, and all sorts of other really cool stuff at merch.classicminidiy.com. All right, let's get back to the episode. Now, as I said, we are gonna be replacing my alternator in my Mini with a lightweight, ultra small alternator. This one I picked up from MED Engineering and it's uh, made by a company called Breeze. That's B-R-I-S-E. And I believe it's a UK based company. And this is a 60 amp alternator. Now I'm gonna be replacing the alternator that is on my car right now, which is a 75 amp alternator. I used to have a much larger alternator because I needed it for all of the electronics that I was running in the car. I had a subwoofer, I had an amp for that, I had speakers, I had all this extra stuff in my car. Now I still have a set of speakers in my car, four speakers, but that is all the additional electronic stuff I have aside from my electronic fuel ignition system. Now, 60 amps should be enough to cover the power needs of my car. And uh, this is going to be a great way for me to open up a little bit of space up in the front of my car to install a larger front mount radiator. That's something that's gonna be coming down the road. But this also is gonna reduce the overall weight in the front of the car. Not by a lot, but every little bit helps here and there. Now before we start removing a bunch of stuff, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about the way that this alternator gets wired up um, in reference to my older Mark I Mini. Now over the years, there were a few different ways that these alternators were wired up. And in my car, I've got a little bit of a special requirement in that the wire that is used to power my battery and to recharge it isn't actually the full gauge wire that you might normally see on a newer alternator or something that is a little bit more modern. Now, in this case, this is a perfectly new modern alternator and it comes with a sweet little plug here just like this. Now the way that we're gonna have to wire my car is going to be a little bit different though. So let me get a diagram out here so we can kind of talk through the way that my alternator is gonna get wired up. Now to get started, let's talk about how the wires in my car are actually run currently. Now I have my battery in the back of the car like this with a positive and a negative lead. So that's positive and that's negative. Now, this right here is the body of the car. This is also kind of a universal symbol for ground. So the way that this works is that the negative lead gets grounded to the car. Now, the body of the car is going to act as a common grounding point for anything that we would be connecting up that needs a negative ground. But the other end we have is our positive lead. Now, in my car, the way that this works is that positive lead goes up to a floor start button. This is something that was original to the Mark I Minis, and this is a little button that has a positive lead and then another positive lead, effectively. Now, the way that this works is when you press the button, it completes the circuit here, and then this power is sent up to the starter solenoid. Now, this is our little starter. Normally in modern cars, this actually has a solenoid that's built into it that is triggered by your key. But in my case, I've got a floor start button and this kind of operates as the power to the starter specifically. And my key only controls ignition and the actual uh, fuel pump and the other electronics inside the car. So what happens is I turn the key in my car and then I press my floor start button. Now, in my case, I have two wires coming to my alternator. All right, so this is my alternator and we have one wire that plugs in. This is the larger of the two wires, but it's still only about a 14 gauge wire. This is always hot. This is what is actually delivering all of the power generated by the alternator back to the 
electronics in the car, as well as the positive lead on the battery. And then we have another wire here that gets plugged in, and this is only hot when the ignition is turned on. So with the new alternator, the way that this is set up, we have to kind of rewire this stuff a little bit. First things first, we need to deliver a appropriate size gauge wire running from the alternator itself. So the new alternator will get a positive terminal, which will be this always hot side right here. This will need to go to the positive lead of the battery. Now, if you were running this on a newer car, or rather a newer Mini, you probably would be able to get that always hot power from the starter itself. In my case, I have this jump right here from the starter button to my starter itself that is not always hot because the floor start button is actually what delivers that hot power. So, what I'll need to do is run a four gauge wire. That's right, four AWG. And this is gonna get run into the always hot terminal, which is this right here, this terminal. And that terminal right there is gonna get both the always hot lead from my battery, as well as the always hot lead that's currently sitting and connected to my alternator. Now, the benefit of this is that it's gonna be able to deliver the full current of the alternator back to the battery to recharge it but I'm not gonna have to kind of cut or mangle any of my existing wiring. Now, for this ignition-based wire right here, this is pretty simple. We have an ignition switch, so both of these wires right here are run off of your ignition, so they both only get turned on when your ignition key is turned on. And this is gonna get connected in right here. So, we're gonna have this little switch additionally plugged in right here and then we'll have two wires coming off of it. Both of those wires are then going to get brought back together, and then those will go over to the existing wire. So the existing wire will go right here. Now I know this is all kind of a little confusing here, um, and I'm doing my best to kind of illustrate this, but I will be kind of going over these same principles once we're out on the car. But I wanted to draw a diagram here for you uh, just to make it hopefully a little bit easier. So to recap this, we have the battery with a positive lead, and that's going to my floor start button. I am going to take off another lead from my floor start button. This is going to be the full gauge for, for AWG wire, and that's going to run up to the post on the alternator right here. And then I am going to connect my old wire to that same post. And then the ignition based wire is going to connect to both of these leads right here. So these are going to get pushed together as such. And then both of those will get plugged in here and that'll be the ignition source for the alternator. All of that coming from positive leads. So the alternator itself doesn't actually get any sort of negative connection lead attached to it at all which is a little counterintuitive for folks who maybe have only worked with car stereo systems or lighting systems, things like that on the car. So with all that out of the way, let's head out to the car. We'll get the old alternator off and then we'll install this one and then we'll wire it all up. So let's head out there. Now, as far as getting the alternator off, it's not too difficult, and it's not too difficult in pretty much any Mini that you'll be working on. Um, it is two bolts right on top here. Um, this nut will come off, and then this bolt will come out. And then you have the tensioner bolt and the tensioner rail on the bottom side of the alternator here. It's all pretty straightforward. All of these should be half-inch bolts. We're gonna take those off, and we'll pull this out of here. One big important thing is that when you're working with electrical items like this, you are gonna to wanna to turn off the power or disconnect your battery. So in my case, I've actually got a battery cutoff that I have already installed. If you haven't seen that video, it should be popping up in the corner. But in my case, all of my wires are not hot right now, so we'll be able to take all this stuff off without causing any sort of damage. Now we have the alternator removed, and this is a really good example. You can see how much larger the full-sized alternator is than the race alternator, and this one is considerably lighter as well. So there you go, little comparison. Now the nice thing about reinstallation is it is largely the opposite of removing something. Now all we got to do here is put that belt on so that that's in place, 
And then what we're gonna do is kind of just like loosely set this in place here. Um, you'll notice that this bracket over here, I actually kind of like loosened up and, and made it so that it was a little bit easier for me to work with this while I'm doing this. Um, you'll also see that my alternator is gonna sit a little bit closer than yours might, simply because I have a, um, a larger diameter pulley on my fan here. So my alternator is gonna sit nice and tight and close to my whole uh, engine block and everything. So get that kind of in place there. Now one thing I didn't run into an issue at all here with, but sometimes you might, this spacer right here or the pulley that's on the end of your alternator might not actually synchronize and line up with the pulley on your water pump. Um, in that situation, what I found the easiest thing to do is to try and find yourself a uh, alternator pulley that fits rather than trying to change out the alternator fan um, or the fan belt, the fan pulley, anything like that. Now we've got a nice tight belt here. It's not too tight, but it is just the right amount to let that thing spin. And the last thing, we're actually gonna have to wire up our alternator system. So this small wire right here is the ignition wire I was talking about. So this small wire is gonna get connected into the dual switch that I had before. And then this large one is going to have to get connected to the main terminal, this big post right down here. And that is gonna go down to the floor start button for some positive lead. Now, the easiest way I found I thought to do this was to splice these two together into a spade connector. This will actually get connected to the factory harness here, so we'll slide that in. Now we have our ignition switch here, so that can get easily plugged into the port that's down here on the actual alternator itself. Now, for this larger spade connector, what I think I'm gonna do is get a larger spade to slide in here and then extend it to a small terminal spot that that'll be, then be able to tighten down on that post there. That way I don't have to cut any of the factory harness system here, but I am able to connect this up easily to the positive lead. Now, we also need to get our four AWG wire and, and we need to run that from the front here where this alternator is all the way down to the floor start button. And the last thing that we're gonna do, now that those are connected up, is to turn the battery on and test to make sure it's charging. Now in order to do this, you need to have something that can measure your voltage. And uh, if you are charging properly, you should see over 12 volts while the car is running. And then when the car is not running, you should see 12 to 13 volts just stable, not changing too much. Um, that's with the car off. So you can see here, we've got Roughly 11.6 volts, which might not be enough to start it up. Now it's looking good. We've got about 14 volts charging, which is a little bit higher than what I had before. I'm hoping that that new battery cable is actually gonna help keep this sucker charged. But you can see up front that the alternator is spinning and we are in good shape. All right, so that is gonna wrap up this episode of Classic Mini DIY. If you guys have any questions at all about this alternator, the install process, feel free to post that in the comment section below. Keep in mind that I most likely will not be able to diagnose your electrical issues though. They are extremely hard to diagnose accurately over the internet. Um, but if you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them the best that I can. Now, if you want to pick up this lightweight alternator, I do have a link to it in my description below. It's from MED, but it is a breeze alternator, so that's something that you can pick up. Maybe if MED isn't available in your area. But that is going to wrap up this episode, and until I see you guys on the next one, enjoy those minis, and motor on. Uh -huh.